In order to fully walk in power as a believer in Yahshua, there is a subject that requires understanding. Much confusion and debate often stem from a believer not understanding this topic. In order to be a believer, you must believe that Yahshua died for our sins and rose on the third day, conquering death. And as long as we live through and believe in him, we are redeemed through him to the Father on the day of judgment. And this is very important to understand. But while living in this world, and in order not to be overtaken by the enemy, we need power. Now the world likes to tell us that it's all about the power inside of us. A lot of so-called Christian pastors talk to us about the power within or our instinct. But there is a real power that is not taught about as it should be and understood. And because it's not taught about and understood by many, it's a main reason why there is a huge lack of strength within the church today. The purpose of this video is to explain to you about this power and to build up the strength of the church in the last days so that we can save as many souls as possible before this power is taken away. You of course know by the name of this video that the power is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the Holy Spirit? Let's cover that first. The Holy Spirit is Elohim's, God's, personal presence. The Holy Spirit exercises the power of the Father and the Son. He is the power by which believers come to the Messiah and see with new eyes of faith. The Holy Spirit is shown through Scripture as the power by which Christians, the Kodeshim, are brought to faith in the Messiah, and he's used to help to understand their walk with Elohim. He brings a person to new birth, being born again. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter, or Helper, whom Yahshua promised to the disciples would come after his ascension. It is through the Helper that the Father and Son abide with his people. In John chapter 15, verse 26, Yahshua says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Believers in Yahshua who are born again are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, meaning the Spirit of Elohim lives inside all believers. We have Elohim living on the inside of us, which allows us to be with him always. Without the Holy Spirit, the church would be powerless, and Satan knows this. So he has been methodically quenching the power of the Holy Spirit in believers. You cannot lose his spirit in you, but his power can be quenched or put out. So this is what the Holy Spirit is, but we have a lot more to go over. This video was made to give you a walkthrough in scripture to help you understand the Holy Spirit. You don't need to write the scriptures down. There will be a link in the description box that will take you to all the scriptures used in this video so you can study on your own. Now let's discuss the Holy Spirit. Let's begin. Now when I refer to the Holy Spirit, I will often be saying he, not it. This is important to understand because the Holy Spirit is not a thing. It is Elohim. It is his presence among us. It is not separate from him. It is him. I think that's important to note. Now before we discuss the gift of the Holy Spirit, which believers in Yahshua, the church, have today, we need to discuss the Holy Spirit before Yahshua ascended and left us physically. Because of his enormous influence and role currently, you may get the impression that the Holy Spirit did not exist or was not available before he came upon the apostles. Or there are others with false doctrine that say things like, the Holy Spirit was the law, which is a clear lack of understanding. Just a note that if you come across anyone with this kind of teaching, please do not allow them to teach you anymore. Let me clear up why. In the Old Testament, we see the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, do six distinctive things. They were, one, participate in creation, two, give life to humanity and other creatures, three, strive with sinners, four, came upon certain judges, warriors, and prophets in a way that gave them extraordinary power, five, played a major role with the prophets in Old Testament prophecy, and six, was promised that someday Elohim would put his spirit in his people. Let's examine each one. 1. Holy Spirit participated in creation. The Holy Spirit was around before creation. He participated in the creation of all things. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says, The earth was without form, 
and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the face of the waters. The Hebrew word used for spirit in this verse is ruach, which in English translates to spirit. Also, kodesh is a Hebrew word, and when translated to English, it means set apart or holy. That's where we get ruach ha-kodesh, which means set apart spirit or holy spirit. It is not a ghost, but I digress. The verse in Genesis shows the Ruach HaKodesh was there during creation. The Ruach of Elohim was hovering over the waters. In Job chapter 26, verse 13, it says, By his spirit he adorned the heavens. To adorn is to make something more beautiful. By his spirit he made the heavens more beautiful. He participated in the creation of the heavens and earth. Awesome. Number two, gives life to humanity and other creatures. According to Psalm chapter 104, verses 29 through 30, it says, You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Again, showing that humanity is created from the spirit of Elohim being sent forth, plain and simple. Number three, he strives with sinners. In Genesis chapter six, verse three, it says, and Yahweh said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Do you see that? Strive means to struggle or fight vigorously. Yahweh said he would not struggle or fight with man forever. His spirit was amongst man searching for righteousness. Number four, he came upon certain judges, warriors, and prophets in a way that gave them extraordinary power. We find this in multiple places within the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 27, verse 18, we see the spirit in Joshua. It says, And Yahweh said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. He had the spirit. When speaking of the judge, Othniel, Judges chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 say, When the children of Israel cried out to Yahweh, Yahweh raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel, who delivered them. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The spirit of Yahweh came upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and Yahweh delivered Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand and in his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. He was able to judge Israel when the spirit of Yahweh came upon him. Or what about Samson? We all know about his power and strength. This was not something that he had from natural ability. We know about his hair, but where did the power really come from? Judges chapter 13 verses 24 and 25 say, So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and Yahweh blessed him. And the spirit of Yahweh began to move upon him at Mahanadan, between Zorah and Eshetal. Or in the next chapter, chapter 14, verses 5 and 6, it says, So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother, and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him, and the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat though he had nothing in his hand. He was able to do this because of the spirit of Yahweh. Even the first king of Israel, King Saul, received power and blessings from the spirit of Elohim. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 say, So it was, when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, that Elohim gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the spirit of Elohim came upon him, and he prophesied among them. You see that? The spirit of Elohim came upon him. But when Saul began to sin against Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul, as told in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. It says, But the spirit of Yahweh departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from Yahweh troubled him. It left him when he started to make moves against Yahweh. These scriptures show that when the spirit of Yahweh came upon these men of the Bible, it gave them power. 
As you can see through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit was providing men with power and abilities. Number five, the Holy Spirit played a major role with the prophets in Old Testament prophecy. How many times did you hear the prophets say, thus says the Lord, or thus says Yahweh? The prophets were not prophesying from their own thoughts, but by the spirit of Yahweh that resided in them. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 2, it says, David declared that the spirit of Yahweh spoke by me, and his words was on my tongue. The spirit of Yahweh spoke through David. Or what about the prophet Ezekiel, when he said in his book, chapter 2, verse 2, Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me, and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. The Holy Spirit entered him. You see, the Holy Spirit spoke through the prophets to relay messages to Israel. This is how they were prophets. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yahweh, spoke through messengers. That's why we have scripture, but I'll get to that soon. Number six, the Holy Spirit was promised that someday Elohim will put his spirit in his people. And yes, the Holy Spirit was promised to the people of Elohim. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. This was the promise that was fulfilled after Yahshua ascended and placed us under the new covenant. His spirit is now in us. These six distinctive activities of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament allow us to see his power from the beginning. But there was one main point that needs to be understood before we go any further. This is one big difference we have between the Old Covenant, which is being saved through the fulfillment of the law, and the New Covenant, which is being saved through grace. The big difference is the application of the Holy Spirit. You see, what you have seen through examining the activities of the Spirit of Yahweh throughout the Old Testament is that His Spirit was placed upon individuals as He gave and purposed. It was not offered to Israel freely if they just followed the law. No, certain judges, prophets, kings, and others all had the spirit of Yahweh come upon them, which allowed them to do certain wonderful things. Back in Genesis, when Joseph interpreted the dreams for Pharaoh, it was not Joseph, but the spirit of Elohim in him. According to Genesis chapter 41, verse 37 and 38, even Pharaoh knew this. It said, So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the spirit of Elohim? The Pharaoh knew the spirit of Elohim was in Joseph. Or in Daniel chapter 5, verse 14, when Nebuchadnezzar's wicked son, the king of Babylon, Belshazzar, said, I have heard of you, that the spirit of Elohim is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Yahweh placed his spirit upon individuals for his own purposes. But a person from Israel could not just receive his spirit freely. We see this in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Yahshua said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Yahshua was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit was not yet given. Maybe that made it clearer for you. The Holy Spirit was not yet given freely to those who believed in him. But it is now. Hallelujah. This is what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. It is an awesome free gift that is indescribable. And at this point, we should all just say thank you to the Father for this wonderful gift. Thank you, Father. But this is what the new covenant is. You have seen what the Holy Spirit did in the Old Testament, but now we will understand him more through this current covenant. Now, when people want to start reading their Bible and start growing closer to the Father, I often recommend people start in the book of John. Others disagree because they feel that in order to understand, you must start in the beginning. And that's a fair opinion. But the reason I recommend starting in John is because in order to draw closer, you must understand Yahshua and be born again to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will not learn that in Genesis. The Old Testament will explain why you need Yahshua. But right now, my priority is for you to understand him and the Holy Spirit. Because if you die tomorrow without knowing Yahshua, 
all your knowledge of Genesis, Exodus, First and Second Kings, whatever in the Old Testament will not save you. But you will gain understanding in the book of John. And the reason John is so great is because not only will you gain understanding of Yahshua, but you also learn of the Holy Spirit. So this is where we'll start. After Yahshua and his disciples took part in the Last Supper, Yahshua said this in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 18. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And then verse 26, he says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. And then chapter 16, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me. Thank you, Yahshua. This is pure power, and I recommend everyone reading John chapter 14 through 16 on their own and let it sit with you. My next study on the History Religion series will be about this, part 41. But Yahshua told his disciples that when he left, he will pray the Father will give us another helper that will teach us all things and bring remembrance to things he said. But if he did not leave, the helper will not come. This is power. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, before we understand the different qualities and role of the Holy Spirit, it's important to understand what actually happens when receiving the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we are new creations. Yahshua said this in John chapter three. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Elohim. You see, it is our spirit that is reborn so that we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul said, Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are new creations. We walk according to his Spirit, which is in us, and no longer according to our flesh. This is a topic that needs to be discussed through examination of much scripture. But the point that needs to be understood is that our spirits are being reborn and now we are being filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we do this? In Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 39, the Apostle Peter says, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all of you who are far off, as many as Yahweh our Elohim will call. This is how you receive the Holy Spirit. Right before Yahshua ascended to the heaven, he told his apostles, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You understand that? You shall receive power. In the beginning of the book of Acts, followers of Yahshua appear to be confused and fearful. By the end of the book, they are well on their way to transforming the, at the time, Roman world with the gospel. There was a dramatic change. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. And here's the big change. It was not only Israel that received this gift and power. Gentiles were able to receive it too. Acts chapter 10 verse 45 says, And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. You see, all who believe in Yahshua can receive this gift. Don't let anyone tell you differently. So let's start talking about the works of the Holy Spirit. These are some of the roles that his spirit plays. One, he will give you power. Like I just pointed out, 
Yahshua said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 2. The Holy Spirit speaks through Scripture. This is shown through verses like Acts chapter 1, verse 16, which says, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Yahshua. The scripture that was fulfilled was given by the Holy Spirit, which spoke through the mouth of David. And the Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 28, verse 25, So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers. And this is important to understand. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 say, All scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You would not have a Bible today without the Holy Spirit. All that is communicated to you about Yahweh and Yahshua and the history of Israel is all according to the Holy Spirit. His words are scripture, and the more you use it, the more power you have. This is why Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, The word of Elohim is the sword of the Spirit. Number three, he dwells in you. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, that if the spirit of him who raised Yahshua from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Messiah from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Number four, he is an anointing. First John chapter two, verse 27 says, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Let the Holy Spirit reside in you and take over. It is an anointing. Number five, he guides us. In John chapter 16, verse 13, Yahshua said, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Number six, he empowers us. Micah chapter three, verse eight says, but truly I am full of power by the spirit of Yahweh and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Let the Holy Spirit empower you. Number seven, he bears witness. Again, Romans chapter eight, verse 16 says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Elohim. Number eight, he is our helper. Again, Yahshua told this in John chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Let him help you. Number nine, he will give you discernment. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter two, verses 10 through 14 say, but Elohim has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of Elohim except the spirit of Elohim. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from Elohim, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by Elohim. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of Elohim, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Let the Holy Spirit give you discernment. So let's go over those qualities and roles again. He gives you power. He speaks through scripture, which is his sword. He dwells in you. He is an anointing. He guides us, he empowers us, he bears witness for us, he is our helper, and he gives us the sermon. He is definitely not limited to this, but these are great attributes for you to know. No other gift can ever compare. Again, please thank the Father. Thank you, Father.
A believer must walk in the Spirit. Let His Holy Spirit guide us. This is a point that many people do not understand when speaking about law versus grace. If you are led by His Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians chapter 5 verse 18. If you let His perfect Spirit guide you, He would not lead you into unrighteousness. When you walk in the Spirit, you display His fruits. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 25 say, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Messiahs have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. When you are not walking in the Spirit, you are fulfilling the fruits of the flesh, which Galatians 5, 19-21 explain as adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, reveries, and the like. And when you practice such things, you will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. So you should focus on being led by His Spirit. Again, you cannot lose the Holy Spirit, but you can absolutely quench Him in your life. That's why in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, the Apostle Paul says, Do not quench the Spirit. I have a video that speaks about this in greater detail. Please check it out if you have not already done so. The Holy Spirit is a gift that we have been given, and there is nothing on earth more powerful than it. But it comes at a price of submission. The Holy Spirit does not work in combination with the world. You cannot activate His Spirit in your life while being of this world, partaking in its traditions. You cannot activate His Spirit while acting through your flesh. So you must make a decision to either grow in power by rejecting the ways and patterns of this world, or let your enemy take advantage of you because you engage in behavior that reduces your power. There is so much I can say on this topic, but I do not want to overwhelm you with information and I think this is a good starting point for you to understand the biggest and best gift you have ever been given. This study is purposed to bring more power in the body of Messiah. I hope that this has helped and blessed you. Don't play games. There is no better time than now to build your relationship with the Father and grow the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. He speaks with us all differently, I think. When I was often straying too far from him, or if I was researching something that was a little too wicked, he would often give me a slight pain in my chest that I began to recognize was him telling me, I'm going too far, or that's just too much evil. And I especially began to pay attention to his voice from it. Sometimes in my head, I would hear things like, don't do that, or go here, or help her, or respond to this, don't respond to that. I wish I could say that I always listened, but that's not true. But because of that, I could definitely understand his voice more clearly when I saw what happened when I yielded to that voice or I ignored it. Just understand, he never goes against scripture. So if there is something you are not sure of, look for it in the word. That's also why it's important to know the word. Because if you know the word, you know more clearly that you are hearing from him. I don't think this is something you become great with understanding overnight. This is something you work at and grow. And the more you work at it, the easier it will become to walk in the spirit. I really hope that helps someone. I had to make this because part 41 of the series deals with the Holy Spirit and I wanted to make sure there was proper background info. Like I said before, go to the link in the description box to get a list of all the scriptures used in this video. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. I hope many people now understand the power of the Holy Spirit better. If you have not already done so, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I want to thank everyone who donates to this ministry. Your donations allow me to make videos like these, and I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for believing in me and sowing into this ministry. I praise Yahweh for you. Okay, everyone. Thanks again for watching. I love you all.